Satellite, satellite, don't care tonight. I got to fight, got to fight. Oh, will you please play my sound tonight? I got time for you. Satellite, satellite. Oh, we got satellite, satellite. Hey! Uh. Uh. Woo! What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Dime Magazine Podcast, episode 90? What? 90? Are you serious right now? Are you fing serious? Episode 90? Wow. What a stellar, whoops, achievement. How's it going, everyone? Uh, t- so, I woke up this morning and I had a, my mouth was dry. It's happened two days in a row now, like, so dry that it, not only does it feel gross, but it's, I just, ah, it's a, You know the dry mouth feeling? It's a terrible feeling. And that's what I got right now. So I'm trying to drink some agua to get my mouth all hydrated again. Mm. Mm. Ah, I think I've been... I bought... I normally don't drink sodi pop that often. But... Uh, the last, uh, grocery shop stint I went on, I just said to myself, you know what? I'm going to treat myself and I'm going to buy a a whole case of fucking Sprite. And yesterday, well, last night I drank like two, maybe three in a row. I can't remember. And so I think, and that was right before bed. So I think... That might have dehydrated me a bit. I don't know. Yeah, because normally I just stick to water. So, I haven't had a dry mouth issue in the morning until I started drinking that Saudi pop. And it's gross. I don't like it. It tastes... Well, the, the, the soda pop tastes good. But the dry mouth, ugh. I don't like it. It won't go away either. takes It takes a while to get a, 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 a adjusted to the to the dry mouth. The dry mouth is gonna. You gotta wait for the saliva to build back up. Am I right? Come on, ah! Huh? What are you talking about? So. Oh, before I get into this, I just wanted to say something else here. Um, I well, This morning, I, I was in the shower, and I was thinking, you know what? I can do, I can change this setup even better, to make it even better. So rather than doing it in the, in the small-ass room, I was going to move it up to the living room, move the backdrop, move the lights, move... Move the audio interface to mic to speakers to computer and the hard drive and the fucking mic stands and the tripods and the and the, all the shit, you know? And the cables, lots of cables, lots of power supply, lots of audio, whatever you call them, mufflers, things on the wall. And so I was, but I needed a table because what I wanted to, what I, what, what I want to do, wanted to do and still want to do is have, I want it to be set up sort of like the way Chris D'Elia has his setup. Not, but I don't want to copy him, obviously, but it's always, I've always imagined it that way. You, you can see the table and you can see the laptop on the table and put a sticker on my laptop. You know, that shit's been done before by plenty of podcasters. And this style, this style's not bad. This style's pretty good. 
You know, it took me a while to f- to figure this out. Even though it looks simple, it took me a little bit to get this situated. And so this morning, I, I was like, well, if I'm going to do that, I need a table. So uh, I, I looked around, didn't have any tables, but I knew I had a table out on my patio. Uh, I use that to, it's just one of those folding, those tables that fold out from the bottom, the legs fold out, just cheap little tables. I use it to put my, uh, I got a portable barbecue, I put it on there. But it's been sitting outside all summer. So I was like, I'll just, I'll just clean it. So last night around 12 o'clock p.m., like right at midnight, a.m., p. no, it would be p.m. at that point, right? No, a.m. A.m., yeah, a.m., 12 a.m. So I um, I cleaned, that th- cleaned off the top because it was filthy. Oh, wait, that's not, at 12 o'clock last night, it rained like... A motherfucker, thunder and lightning. It was like oh, it was a hard, hard rain. I was gonna film it, but I didn't. Open the door, and there was water coming in. It was raining that hard. It was as if like someone took a giant bucket and just dumped it, and continued to dump massive, massive buckets of water from the sky. It was not a light rain. It was heavy, hard. It sounded like someone was using a, a fire a fire truck hose and sprayed my house with it. That's how hard it was. So the table got wet, obviously, which wasn't a big deal. So I cleaned off the top this morning, and then I was like, you know what? The bottom's going to be. The bottom is definitely going to be filthy and probably full of spider webs. So I'm like, I'll clean that off. Tip the table over. And as I do that, um, we got a... a like a, I don't know what you call it, an in, influx of rusty water starts leaking out almost constantly. So I got like this copper color water all over my deck. Shit, that sucks. But it's not a big deal. I'll continue to clean. I get under there. There is so many spider webs and nastiness, just like dirt spiders themselves. And it was just like stained gross colors and there was stuff all over the place and so i was like do i really want to go through this so i started cleaning off the spider webs they're old spider webs and then a spider jumped out at me he didn't jump out he crawled out and then i'm like what's what's up little fella you're gonna have to find a new home so i was trying to push him away but he kept coming back and then i noticed there was just like a a fucking pouch of spider eggs. You know, you've seen it before. It's like a, a spider web all wrapped up in a ball, and then there's a bunch of little balls all inside the web. And I'm like, ah, I can't use this table. Because you know what happens when you poke those spider eggs? Thousands of spiders come out. And so I'm like, eh, I'm not going to go through with this because it, I could poke this and get all the spiders out and try, but you know what? There's so many fucking spiders. I'll probably they'll probably all end up inside my house. Not only that, but there was like that wasn't the only spider nest. There was multiple, and there was multiple spiders and grossness all over the bottom. So I said, "Fuck it, I'm not using this table." It was also warped from being outside, so my computer wouldn't even have sat on it properly. I'll just get a new one, eventually. So for now, the podcast format is staying this way, which is fine because this is this is a great setup, but I want it to be just a little bit better. I want the audience to be able to see my full torso so that I can display my T-shirts because uh, that was one of the main aspects <laughs> Fuck. of this show. Was to have my I want to I wear a different T-shirt every episode, obviously, but I want to display the T-shirts because I have a lot of colorful and unique T-shirts that say cool stuff, and I want to test them out. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? 
Oh fuck, you know what else I wanted to do? Damn it, I didn't do this. I was gonna Shit, how do you get this off? I was gonna try and do uh like a second angle. A curt angle of the of this podcast. Just uh, you know, every once in a while it changes angles and I forgot to fucking didn't even turn the camera on or anything. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Episode 90. Wow. You're a profesh, my friend. You're a profesh. Thank you. That's what they call me. Mr. Profesh. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Oh, wow. That angle is not flattering. Hi. Because it's pointed right at the window you can't even see oh wow yeah that's not much of a flattering angle hey well let's give it a shot there's the angle hey hi everyone welcome to the second angle yeah this angle is much better the the uh image quality the colors everything's better this way this way not so good i can tell right now it might be different when i actually upload it to the computer because you can't tell through the viewfinder you can't fucking tell you can't stop it all of stuff now for me do your dogs ever do that they just come up to your leg and decide i'm gonna sniff your leg Delicious. Delicious water. Right until I can't no more. I'm gonna blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you something about Old Town Road. Get down, Olive. I don't... I don't like the song, okay? I don't like it. I... Now, don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't like Lil Nas X... Or what he was trying, or what he's trying to do, because obviously he found something that no one's found yet, and good for him. He's uh, that's a smart move on his behalf, and you know that's great. But I don't, and I have never liked country music since a child. This is this is something. One of the few things that has actually stuck with me. Um, normally, I, uh, you know, we all change as a, as a hu- as humans. But when it comes to country music, you cannot change my mind on what I think about country music. I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay, and so, but I do. I love rap for sure. That has always been a favorite of mine since a child. Um, throughout high school, I kind of, high school and junior high, I faded away from it. I went into more of a classic rock e- era, and then I went into electronic music. I was really into electronic music for quite some time. And then I kind of plunkered my way back into rap and now that's generally what I listen to now. Gangsta rap motherfucker! <laughs> you know what it is. You know what it is, boy! You know what it is! What did you say? You say so? I don't know if I'm going to keep this uh, second angle. <sighs> I got to figure out a way how to do this properly. Because the way I'm making this podcast, although it looks proper, uh, the way I'm doing it is not. You understand? Or maybe it is. I don't know. But I feel like there's a way... Well, there is a way. You know, the real the real way I should be doing this 
is going live. But I don't have a VPN, so I don't want to risk it for a biscuit, you know? Because th- when I started this, I actually did go live for, for like the first few episodes. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Um, I went live on Twitch, and then someone commented and was like, oh, I got all your information. Here it is. And they posted it. I was like, Sh- shit, I should have used a VPN. And then at that point, I was like, no more live, no more live. It doesn't have to be live, right? It's nice, but there's a, it's a, it's another huge process to get things going live, you know, and it doesn't have to be because if it goes live, You run the risk of saying shit or doing shit that's going to hurt you. Whereas if you just pre-record it uh, and you feel a little uneasy about what you said or did, you can change that shit by cutting it out. So, I forgot to show the cards. Let's show the card. Boop, boop, boop. Here it is. Quick little glimpse. That's the tradition. That's all you get. You don't get to read what I write. Unless you pause the video and maybe you can see it. But I think it's too blurry for y'all to see. Right until I can't no more. I'm going to buy my heart down an old town road. I, I, you know what? I don't like the song. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, it, it's good. Obviously, it's good because fucking it's, it's number one. And yeah, it's catchy because I'm singing it, but <sighs> isn't this angle pretty not that great, you know? Because <laughs> what, what this angle shows is basically behind the scenes sort of thing. Because you're seeing my wall. You can even see this friggin' mic that I was going to use a while back, which is kind of an okay little backdrop. Makes it look like... I got some professional little aspects on the side. And you can see my, um, what do you call those fucking things? Those, uh, foamy things you put on the wall to, to make the sound not aqui or whatever. Those are over there. Meh. And you can't see the Fat Max. The Fat Max is there. Do you know what the Fat Max is? Do you know what the Fat Max is? If you watch my older podcast, you should know what the Fat Max is. And if you don't know what the Fat Max is, let me just give you a quick rundown what the Fat Max is. Okay? The Fat... Oops. You know what I... You know, before I talk about the Fat Max, I need... You know what I really need? I need someone... I need someone... On this, in, the, in, the back, in the background of this podcast just taking notes. Because I, I, I need to, it makes it, it makes it so much easier on me if I just have someone take a note so that I know what I can title the video or I know what hashtags I can use and blah, blah, blue, blah, 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 blue, blah, 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 not hashtags, but tags in general. <laughs> so what I've been trying to do is write down notes while I'm recording, but it's so distracting and I forget most of the time. Like, what were we just talking about before I mentioned the Fat Max? I was talking about tables and podcasting, right? And, oh yeah, Old Town Road. Ride till I can't no more. I got a big buddy Bushkin, a papa scoot. Okay, stop singing it if you hate the fucking song. You gotta think, do you really hate the song if you keep fucking singing it? Yeah, it's stuck in your head, but... Fuck! You wouldn't sing it if you didn't like it. So the Fat Max, you can't see it right now, but if you go to the internet, the Google device, and you say, or type, uh, Stanley Fat Max, um, the internet is going to display images of a portable toolbox. And there's different types of Fat Maxes. Mine is the one that um, 
Mine's the one that has, it's like a, it's a bigger one. Not that big. It's big, big. It's lengthwise. It has. It looks like a suitcase that you can roll on wheels. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start recording the screen here in a second, and I'll and I'll Google it and I'll show you. I'll show you what the fuck it is. So, if we just go to app, ah, go to Google and type in Stanley. Whoops, I just typed in Stanley. Oh look, it's showing the tools though. Stanley. Fat Max. Okay. Go to images. See, there's all different kinds of fat maxes. Uh, where's mine? Here's mine right here. You can't see that very well, can you? That is a horrible image. Okay. Here we go. Here's the fat max. You see this? You see this thing right here? This thing is just like a big portable toolbox. I used to use this for... Um, what did I use it for? I used to use it at work. I had a job that was um, uh, oh, my nose is itchy. I had a fucking mechanical mechanics job. I was a me I was a heavy duty mechanic. Can you believe it? At one point, for the oil field, huh? And that that's what I used for my service calls. What's a service call? Well. Uh, sometimes the the units, the trucks, can't uh, make it to the shop because they're broke down somewhere. So when they can't make it to the shop to get fixed, you got to go on a service call. So you take your toolbox and you drive out to where they are and you fix their shit. So that was my portable toolbox. I used it for the right thing at one point. But then when I got laid off from that job, I said... What am I going to do with this toolbox? Sold all my tools. And my... I have a snap-on toolbox still that I haven't sold yet. But anyway, that's a different story. So, I have this box, this portable toolbox. And I'm like, should I just get rid of this? And then, I sit down and I smoke some weed. And then I'm thinking, I'm like, wait a minute. I've got all this... All these weed products... Like, I've got 10 different bongs. I've got 100 pipes. I've got thousands of papers. I've got, you know, stems and glass adapters for the bongs. And the list goes on. The weed itself in a jar. Like, I don't, I had no place to put all this stuff. And this was, this was when weed was still illegal. So I had to hide it from certain people. And not only is this... A toolbox but it has a lock on it you can lock it up it's perfect for all my weed shit so I now all my weed stuff is in the fat max and it has been for the past three or four years and I love it for that and now I've become when I have my friends come over who know or, or who know me for smoking weed and who smoke weed with me as well they you know, the, the Fat Max has become a part of our group. It's uh, when, when we hang out, they say, where's the Fat Max? Pull out the Fat Max. It's great. And then there was, we had a 420 celebration this year on 420, April 20th. 420, yeah, the Hitler Day. So I brought the Fat Max, and we had a nice time. We had a good display. There wasn't enough people there, but we had a good display. I took out all the bongs and all the pipes, and I displayed them across the table, and then I had the Fat Max open. It's a great, it's a great look, and it's got stickers all over it too. So that's the Fat Max story. If you got, <coughs> oh god, if you got weed and weed accessories. You should consider getting yourself a Fat Max, unless you got some better storage compartment. Because the other reason why I like this is because it's portable. You want to smoke weed? Just close it up and take it. It's heavy, but, you know, it's got wheels. The The only downside about it is that when you're transporting glass bongs, they can, they rattle around in there. So you gotta you risk breaking stuff. But I've never actually broken glass 
in the Fat Max. I've broken plenty of glass outside the Fat Max. So for me, I break more glass just by handling it than I do transporting the Fat Max around. He's a Fat Max boy. Oh, man, I think I feel another shit coming on. Ah, diarrhea. Um, last episode, I talked about a fatty, <laughs> a fat woman who uh, who wouldn't get out of her seat. Oh, God. I've got a flame in my throat. Ah. She wouldn't get out of her seat. Uh, she was on. She was in her front yard vacuuming the deck from the from a seat, a chair, on the ground on the outside of the deck, and she was sticking the vacuum in between the prongs. And then she told her husband to come down from the roof and move the seat and the vacuum forward. And she sat down. And she, if you want to see the story, go watch the last episode. Uh, but I got an update. I got another update about her. Oh my god. Acid reflux. So, I went for another walk, because that's how I initially uh, discovered her. I went for another walk. I happened to walk past her house again, and this was two nights ago. It was it was uh, just starting to get dark outside, so it was probably around, it was close to 10 o'clock at night. <coughs> and I walked past her house. There's no one outside because it's late at night. Well, not that late, but it was starting to get dark. No one outside. Um, I noticed the deck is clean. <laughs> and there's no more ladder on the roof. It looks like the shingles are all done. And But now there's a completely new addition to the house. There's a wheelchair ramp. The plot thickens. It's a wheelchair ramp. Now, I know this girl isn't in a wheelchair because when she was sitting her... Although she was sitting her fat ass in a chair vacuuming the step, she got up and waddled a bit forward while her husband move the chair forward for her, and move the vacuum forward for her. And then she sat back down and continued to vacuum on the next section of the deck. Uh, but now there's a wheel. there wasn't a wheelchair ramp the last time I was there, which was less than a week ago, and now there's a wheelchair ramp there built into the deck, made out of wood. They did that fast. And so now I'm thinking either this girl is pretending she's in a wheelchair just because she's fat or <laughs> you know what I'm, <laughs> I'm making fun of this I'm poking fun at this woman and I literally have no idea what the story is behind her. So maybe I should stop talking about her. But we know she doesn't need a wheelchair. She can walk. I think she's just lazy. She, uh, You know what? She's just fat and lazy. That's all it is. And I bet she has one of those mobile scooters that old people and obese people drive in Walmart. And that is the reason why they have the wheelchair ramp there. Now, how, f how miserable must your life be if you're fat and can't do anything? And you've been that way for so long that it, you've become so accustomed to it that you just there's no motivation at all to change. And you just live every day grumpy and sweaty because you can't do anything. That, that must suck. You're so obese and miserable and sweaty 
that you give up to the point where you just say, fuck it. I'm going to hop in this wheeled machine that I can just press a button and I'll move around. I don't need to walk anymore. And yeah, I understand there's people out there who need this shit. All right? But there's a lot of people out there who are just lazy and they don't take the time to fix themselves. So they accept it and then they hop themselves into a goddamn um, a mobile scooter device and they just accept it. And you'll see them at the supermarket and they'll, they'll be driving around beep beep get my way. And they'll pull up to the meat section. They'll throw some meats in their basket. And then they'll go to the snack aisle and throw a bunch of candy in there. And, you know. Now this, this camera I'm using, you know about this camera. It's the one that only records for 10 minutes and then pauses like that. See, it's done. So... I was going to hit record again to just keep this side camera going. But what I'm going to do is just shut her down. Shut it down. Okay. And I'm just going to use that 10 minutes. I'm going to use it as a, t <coughs> as a test. <coughs> ah, my throat. I don't even know if it was in focus. I didn't even check the focus. Ow, my leg. But, so yeah. I'll use the, the 10 minutes and I'll throw it in. And if it doesn't look good and I don't like it, then there will be never a second angle again. Until I figure this set out. But for now, we're just going to test it. We're going to test it, okay? Right until I can't no more. Hopefully I remember. I'll pull the SD card out right now. SD! I've got so many SD cards now. I love it. I love an SD card. You know? It's crazy to think that this tiny little rectangle can hold hours and hours of footage. This, like this one's only a 64 gigabyte. But that's a lot for this little thing. But they can get up to fucking 200 gigabytes or more in this. It's crazy. It's really crazy when you think about it. Uh, hold on, I just want to adjust the, the levels here. Because there's a fucking... There's a constant hum in the background. I don't want to turn it down too low so that you can't hear me. But then if I turn it up a little too high, there's just like this constant hum in the background. Ha! And it might be because of this XLR cable. Because I don't think this XLR cable is very quality. And I was going to change XLR cables, but I, uh, I said, fuck you. I ain't going to do it. But you know what? Now's the time, my friend. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. Let me see. Good. As you know, well, you might not know, but I have... I have a lot of XLR cables, so let's just see here. Let me just do a little test here. If I use this one, this XLR cable is a classified as a professional XLR cable, so I'm just going to shut down the audio for a second, and then I'll be back.
test. Testicle. Whoa. Whoa. Hello. Oh my God. Hello. Oh, that's loud. <laughs> I don't hear anything in the background. Yes. The time is nigh. I knew it was that cable. You need high quality XLR cables if you want to do this shit. I know it's green and it looks nice, but you can't, uh, you can't, you can't use it. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's green. Yeah, it looks nice and it's pretty. But guess what, bub? Life's not about prettiness. If I go that high, then that's too high, but yeah, this cable's a bit better, a lot better. And I don't even think this is like the the best cable I have. I'm pretty sure I got better ones than this. I should honestly try using the cable that came with this. Oh man, I'm getting sweaty. I shut the AC off because uh, it's too loud for this podcast. And um, so um, what the fuck was I going to say? Doesn't matter. That's the fatty update. The fatty fat McFatty Spatterson. Um, the other thing, the main, so the main topic we're going to talk about today uh, revolves around some stuff that's been happening, and I'm sure you've heard about it already. If you're uh, involved in social medias and whatnot, uh, so over this past weekend, maybe a bit before that, I don't really know when it started. I can't remember. But people are just are, have to come up to this conclusion this decision i should say that they are going to storm and raid area 51 to find out what the fuck's going on there eh, this is something you we've been seeing over the news on twitter um everywhere there's been a petition or whatever what do you call it a fucking, uh, like a pledge thing. Uh, oh my God. I'm sorry. That's gross. That's so gross. There's a f f over, okay. Different sources are saying there's over upwards of 700,000 people have signed up to attend the storm area 51 event. Uh, the, there's a Facebook event. And this dude named it Storm Area 51. They can't stop us all. And over 700,000 people have joined this fucking thing. And he's talking about how if if y'all just do the Naruto run, we can get in no problem. They ain't gonna stop. <laughs> like that weird kid in school who, who does the Naruto run down the hall. You can't stop that bastard. He's just gonna go for forever. And I f so I feel like this all got escalated because of Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan recently brought on Bob Lazar and that other f asshole who made the documentary about him. Even though the documentary was garbage, it was garbage. I don't recommend it. But I, but I, I do recommend watching the Bob Lazar podcast with Joe Rogan. You'll get way more information from that podcast than you will from that dumb documentary. The documentary was n it was not done well at all. At all. And I don't like criticizing stuff usually unless it deserves it. And that documentary it deserves it. It's not it's not that great. So so if you don't know who Bob Lazar is, he Oh boy, he worked at um, 
somewhere. Can't remember. <laughs> and then they brought him into Area 51 because of his background and uh, whatever he had. And he discovered phenomenons and physical objects that he worked on and spaceships that were so beyond any sort of technology that we could ever imagine back then, let alone today, that, and they still don't know how it works. Like, he had this anti-gravity device that he was trying to uh, reverse engineer to figure out how it works, and they couldn't, and they can't. It's, I can't explain it. You just got to watch the Joe Rogan podcast with Bob Lazar. It's fascinating. But what I want to talk about are these people that are deciding that they want to storm uh, Area 51. So the, the, the raid is set for, I'm just reading an article here, for September 20th between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. with the details section nothing what oh noting <laughs> dyslexia if we if we naruto run we can move faster than their bullets cool i'm excited for september 20th i hope here's the thing i do not recommend doing this okay because it's kind of like a death wish Look at my mustache. It's too long over here. It's basically a death wish. You're asking to possibly die. This place is so heavily guarded. No one has ever m actually managed to get in from the outside. People have tried. They've either died or got kicked out. And, you know, there's been lots of videos... Of uh, people in their SUVs just pulling up to the sign outside the gates, and then they get chased away by the military. And there's been all that, but it's always been like one or two or three, just a few people going to check it out. And even Bob Lazar himself went with his friends because he couldn't believe what was going on, and that got him into shit. But anyway. And that's basically the whole reason why he started talking. But ah, blah, 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 blah. watch the podcast. So, but no one has ever gone to Area 51 in this large of a group. And if this many people actually show up, what the hell's going to happen? Like if you, something like this doesn't happen all the time. Stuff like this has, I don't think it's ever happened. Like, could you imagine on September 20th, 700,000 or more, because the petition's still available, people can sign up. That's almost a million people. <laughs> could you imagine that many people showing up at Area 51? What the fuck? Even though they have high security... At Area 51, what the fuck are they going to do? Are they really going to shoot that many people? This is going to be crazy if this goes down. I mean, it started as a joke. And it may still be a joke. But uh, according to this article, it says it may... It, it all may be a joke or luck for many of the supposed UFO seekers... But federal officials aren't laughing about the possibility of people actually showing up at the highly classified military base, which is a remote detachment of California's Edwards Air Force base. This. Okay, so let's say. Well, let's say 700,000 people show up. You know. Like it might, <laughs> as crazy as this might as may as this may sound, this might actually 
work in a crazy way, you know? Like, I hate to say that, but, you know, if we all, if they, if we all just get together in such large numbers and forcefully, but non aggressively, go into somewhere just to figure it out, like, what are they going to do? How are they going to stop 700,000 people? And are they really going to take it seriously up to that point? Are they going to increase the security measures for Area 51? And here's the other thing. If they know the exact day all these people are going to show up, they know about how many people are going to show up, People have even posted plans of how they're going to enter in there. The, the, the government agency people, they're, all, they're seeing all this stuff. So are they going to prepare in advance and hide all the evidence that is uh, um, you know, all the evidence that can prove what Bob Lazar says is true because they know when you're coming. So if they know, they know all your details, they're going to, they're going to hide the shit, right? How do you do this without letting the authorities know it's going to be done? Not easy. So they so you know what? Maybe this won't work. What am I saying? It could work and it can't work, you know? But, uh... Here, here's what I'll say. If 700,000 people actually show up, or more, then I'll be happy. You know? I'll be happy. It'll... It, that is a... That's... That's one of those things that will happen... That doesn't happen a lot. And it's just going to be one of those significant times in our life that we can think back to and, and be like, remember how crazy it was when 700,000 people went to Area 51 just to see what was going on there? Are we moving towards a direction where uh, society is just going to be so unprivatized? That nobody can keep a secret because of the internet. Because as soon as a secret becomes established as being a secret, the internet, which has not existed for a long time, but now we're seeing that the internet and the people who use the internet come together. And they, all the best people that could possibly work on this topic figure shit out. And it's amazing. And so, it's hard to keep secrets nowadays. And we've always preached, tell the truth and whatnot in religion and whatever. So are we moving towards a society where the government or any sort of corporation doesn't keep secrets anymore? Because it's just going to, in the long run, hurt them. The more secrets we keep, the more people are going to fight to reveal those secrets. And now that we have access to the internet, it not only does it make it easier, but it spreads that information to everyone instantaneously. So, if they just tell the truth, we... They won't have people pushing to destroy their image as a company because they just put it all out there. And because they know that they have to put it all out there, they're going to do things properly. You know what I'm saying? Are we moving in that direction? Is this Area 51 raid going to change society all over the world and how we do things? It would be great if it did. 
But I, there's still a part of me that thinks that this is all just a joke. But you know what? There's been crazier things that have happened on the internet. This is pretty crazy. I, don't, I actually don't know if there's been crazier than this. Like this is... If I lived in California, would I sign up for this? I don't know. I don't think so. Cuz if it was if it was something that didn't have such a high risk and there wasn't weaponry involved and weaponry that I might not even know exists. Yeah. It's way too risky, you know? Because even though 700 people may show up, 700,000 people may show up, the, the, um, the, uh, the thought process is, well, if there's that many of us, they can't stop us all, okay? But they can stop some. Who knows if they're just going to start shooting? <laughs> and you're one of those people who gets shot. That wouldn't be fun. You went there. F you went there to discover something, at the risk of your own life being taken. And so I uh, shit, shit. I don't know. It would be great to find out if that stuff about the aliens was true. And uh, you know, I don't want to see anyone die or get hurt. But I want I want this to happen. I think it would be great. Wouldn't it? It would be a fucking historical event. It's like one of those movements in history. Like, uh, you know, when Martin Luther King stood up and had his I Have a Dream speech. Or he was changing society. He changed society. And how we think about things. And it became such a unique landmark in our history. You mention Martin Luther King to anybody, they're going to know who he is. And they're going to know he had a dream because that was the speech he gave. And that, you know, that couldn't have happened. He didn't have to do that, but he did it. And because he did it, it became a significant event in the world's history. Just by him talking on a stage about what he believes in. And so if we just have... So if this, if 700,000 people got together on the internet because of Bob Lazar talking on the Joe Rogan podcast and they want to know what's going on, what if they accomplish it? What if they figure it out? And if they do figure it out, the government's going to say, well, what the hell? It's too easy for people to figure out what we're doing now. So, why fight them when we can join them? Just start telling the information they want to hear. Why does it have to be all a secret? You know, if the government knows about this stuff, why do they got to hide it? What's the big secret? Why should you have authority over me upon this information? And yeah, I get it. There's crazy people out there and there's, you know, you don't know what people are going to do with this information. So you got to, you got to hide it because people might use it against the government. People might use it to build other crazy weaponry and destroy plan, not planets, but destroy cities and people and whatever you never know but why can't we just reveal the information that we find with everyone whether whether it has negative consequences or not it, you know what am I trying? It ha if it ha it could have negative that could have negative consequences. It could have positive consequences. But either way, the information 
still exists. It's there. It just hasn't been released. So why not just release it? Because it's there. It's a part of the universe. It's a part of everything. You can't just take information and expect to keep it to yourself. Because it exists. If it exists, someone's going to figure it out. And so, why hide it? Why not let it... Why not let that information free and so that the people that can actually use it for good and progression in society, they'll use it for those reasons. And we will become better and more advanced even quicker than we already are. But there's too much greed of these corporations that only care about making more than just a profit. It's not just profiting. They want beyond that money. It's greed. There's so much greed. And a company won't... Not all companies, but the majority of corporations will take the side of we need to focus on making more money rather than making a perfected good product that actually can progress us further. It's all about the money. Give me the money. I want, like, these corporations, we've seen it before. Um, you know, they overprice everything so that they get more money in. Like, they, they don't need that much money. If they just do things at a regular rate and give people what they need at the proper price... They'll make plenty of money. But no, they got to fucking jack up the price and get themselves. I don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about. We're talking about aliens here, not corporations. I don't know. Sum this up. I think. I think. That. I don't know. I just hope it happens. I I do. As much as I'd hate to see people get shot. Um I don't know. I just think it could be a real significant event in our history if people just um if they do this. We need 700 thousand people to show up at area 51 and do this maybe it'll just completely fail uh, but at least it was done maybe 700 people will show 700,000 people will show up and they'll see people with guns and they'll be too afraid to go in and they'll just get escorted up right away <coughs> uh, <coughs> who knows I think I'm getting sick so uh, enough of that we're just going to do a little bit of reddit before we end this podcast and then um, yeah and that'll be it so I'm just waiting for this shit to record because it's slow. Here we go. It's starting, starting, starting. Come on. Come on, baby. Yes. See, that's that's one of the other ways I'm not doing this right is the screen capture. But I do it my way. I don't like the way you do it. What is this thing? Found on my window in South Louisiana. That was on your window? What is that? It's a crown slug moth. Caterpillar. Do not touch it unless you want a world of pain? I accidentally touched a poisonous caterpillar when I was young. Once I went to hell and back out of consciousness from the pain. Never touched any caterpillars after that. Jesus. Get rid of it then. 
Ride until I can't no more. What's going on here? Never text and drive. What is she driving? What is that, a train or something? What is she driving? There's not even a steering wheel. I swear to God, she didn't even check once the speed or where she's going. Yeah. Oh, it's a tram. Normally it would follow a set course, one would think. Anything on rails doesn't like it when you take sharp curves at high speeds. Never text and drive. Never text and drive. Can watch for hours. Let's see. Is it worth watching? Ooh. Yes, it is. I like hot stuff that you can bend like this. Like glass blowing. Well, mostly because I'm, I'm into weed, but... I would love to try. Oh, that's a spring. That's how they make springs. That's cool. And until I can't no more. That song's stuck in my head because no one, everyone keeps talking about it. Here we got some fishes being f puffer fishy. And he's got, what is that? Food or something? Is he trying to make them poof? I didn't do anything. Pufferfish stays by trapped friend's side while human cuts net. Oh, he was stuck in a net. And his friend was staying by. Good friend. Which is creepier? The animatronics Elvis... I ripped the face off while disassembling, or or the selfie of, of with me wearing its face. The fact he thought of doing this at all is creepier. And it's on the Dunder Mifflin page. Why? Because uh, what's his face? Dwight Schrute ripped the face off of a CPR dummy, and he put it on his face. But it didn't look as good as this. Like that actually looks like a pretty decent Elvis mask. Dude catches a big sun umbrella in midair. Well, let's rewind and watch it full screen. Did it did did Grab it! Yeah, oh that would have wrecked your car. That would have went right through your windshield, I bet. Get it! Yeah, oh that would have went right through your windshield. Faux show, buddy. Fow show, buddy. Ah, oh, what could go wrong if you throw some puppies in a dumpster? I don't want to watch that. That's fucking brutal. Red light runner. Run the red light. Who ran it? Oh! Oh, he ran it. I don't think he could. I think he was trying to stop the horse. And it just wouldn't. Oh, somehow Willie Nelson looks the least stoned. Yep, I'd agree. Ferrari breaks on carpet. Okay, let's see. Let's watch this Ferrari. Let's full screen it. No sound. Oh, how did that happen? Oh, he pushed the carpet. <laughs> Woo! Nothing like a good old carpet push. Motherfucker just got a strike without hitting the pins. What does that mean? Now oh, it's promoted cherry. Oh, is that cherry pie? No, it's not. What is this? M berry miracle berry fruit tablets. Oh, turn sour food sweet. I've seen these. Rhett and Link. Rhett and Link. Indulged in these. You eat this. Okay. 
and then you uh, grab yourself something sour like a lemon and eat it and it's sweet and then I think it does it the opposite way too sweet stuff becomes sour that's pretty cool that's just cool this is disgusting babies puking on mom's faces 17 year old Marshall Mathers he's got a hey nice underwear is that what that says he's wearing an ALF shirt look at how nerdy he looks you using too many napkins bapkins I'm driving a Porsche under the floorboards <laughs> uh, I drew my favorite meme one day I'm going to be a beautiful butterfly several poor life decisions later lamp Flame dance to the top water pam ma 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 not that cool. Update on the pamper with the wound under its eye, it's healed fine. Wow. Don't be a dick to people who bought their dogs. Venue in Sweden called Dalhalla, made from an old quarry. Ah, till I can't no more. I'm gonna play my song. I'm a hold out wrong. Wait, what is it? Oh, it's a venue made out of quarry. I didn't even pay attention. Eddie Bravo should offer a free crash course in jujitsu for the brave souls storming Area 51. Hey, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. What do people have to say about that? Gonna rear naked choke the tear gas. Brilliant. Magnifico. Utterly unstoppable. Whoa, look at this snow leopard. He wants a hug. When you're five blunts into a session and it's time for number six. Bop. Crossing a flooded street. You're gonna die. Shouldn't have done that. Now you're all wet. What is that? It's a salamander? Locals were alarmed and called the police when a monster climbed out of Kamagawa, Kamagawa River in Kyoto. It was actually a giant salamander. How the f fuck does it get that big? How? Well, it doesn't look that big compared to the guy, though. It's actually not that big. It's not that big. In the first picture, it looks huge. When you miss the last garbage day... What are you guys doing? Seriously, you think you're going to push that big fucking thing onto the truck? Watch they watch them do it. There's no fucking way. That shit's heavy. Maybe if you had more humans, you could possibly do it. What are they doing? Just all walking, just standing around. What are they going to Are they going to do something? Ah, oh, I know what they're going to do. Now they're standing on the cab so it doesn't fly up in the air. That might work. That's better than pushing at it. Okay. That one guy is going to get crushed. Still not enough weight. And that one guy at the back is pushing it? Like, what the fuck do you think you're going to do? Looks like it worked, though. Damn, boy! That worked pretty good. A while ago, I was so amazed by a video on the sub, I decided to go myself. I'm literally crying. Muir in Switzerland. What are you crying about? I was going to say a word you can't say anymore. Ah, I've done that a lot on this channel. 
Maybe, 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 maybe I'm great. Oh, yeah. Don't want to watch that. I've seen it. Is there audio? That's pretty cool. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. It's got the rhythm. If I made a video game or something, that would be the the background track when you're walking around. Just in the town. Hank the Fix, a repair daily robot I saw at the state fair a few years ago. Let's see him. Wow. There's a snake in my boat. Has your dick ever been too soft to have sex, but you don't want to disappoint, so you ball up your dick like some old homework and hit him with the shrimpy and... Hope your dick wake up inside like Evanescence. Nope. What is that? Bunch of pussies? This view in the Alps. Wow. It's an advertisement blocking the beautiful scenery. Why? I'm going to write a comment. Audi running all scenic views with their advertising. Running or ruining? I'm going to put it out. Ow, or ow, ow. I'm going to say nothing because people are already talking about it. Robert runs in a glass door while escaping. Run, 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 bam. He hit that hard. Chainsaw dude was lucky to be alive. <gasps> Holy. He almost chopped his neck off. <gasps> oh. <coughs> I inhaled something. Oh. Oh. Well. Are you fucking kidding me? That can't be real. That can't be. Well, might be, but... You, you don't shoot that close. Okay, so this... Uh, yeah, we're not going to watch that. I already watched it. Now that's a neck. Yeah, that's a neck, all right. Jeff Bezos is that rich it will cost him as nearly as much to divorce his wife as it's going to cost the UK to divorce the EU. That's true. He is going to have to pay his wife so much money. But I can't remember how much. Billions of dollars and he's still going to be the richest man in the world. Crazy. Uh, I feel like that ride's gonna go to shit. You know what? Listen, folks. Enough of the gay jokes. We are gonna stop this recording. Very soon. I've had enough of Reddit. Let me see. Does this have everything I need? Yes, it does. Okay. Oh no, it doesn't. This is just Okay, sorry. I'm not I'm just talking to myself. Just talking to myself. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Okay. I'm just exporting some stuff because I don't give a shit. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this podcast, this episode of this podcast is coming to an end. Right now, I'm ending it. We've been going for an hour and 15 or something. 
Ah. 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 You got to stretch your body and take time to craft the craft. Okay, folks. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast, episode 90. I'll see you in the next one. 91. Peace, everybody. Peace, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everyone. Get a cup of that. But I, 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 I